I'm Emma Curtin, host of a new true crime podcast called Murder Archives. It's set in Turak in 1929 about the murder of Norma Rees McLeod. Search for Murder Archives where you're listening right now. I went to buy. I know you don't drink wine. You don't drink. You know. No, I don't drink wine. You drink. Beer occasionally. Beer occasionally. I've had yeah. one beer this week at a gig. Yeah. I like to have uh, one wine per night. Why not? Why, oh, <laughs> there's a good name for a show. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, and I'll be honest with you, I don't n- know a lot about wine. Red wine? No, I don't know a lot. I had at I was at a party once and I was drinking Grange, which is like... Expensive. Expensive. Mm. I didn't know. I was drinking it like it was... Well, well, but not my fault. Like it was out of a cask. Like may as well have been. Yeah. Um, so anyway, went to the drive through and I was obviously buying wine that I won't say how much it was, but it was cheap. Okay. And I knew it was cheap. And the and, guy knows it's cheap. And the guy I mean, knows it's cheap. Wine can be very cheap though. You can get like 10 bucks. Well, you, you, you'd be like yeah. 30, wouldn't you? Or you're 10. You're 12. <laughs> oh, no. 10. 10? Well, don't for, say it like was that. It for cooking. <laughs> What? No. You know, you can buy little bottles oh, of wine no, for cooking. Uh, what? Oh, hang on. To make your spaghetti bolognese? No. Bolognese. Okay, Is it well, bolognese? I think you're right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I made it yesterday, in fact. I reckon you'd make a great spaghetti bolognese. I do, you know what? I do. I reckon you'd be, you should have a restaurant called Dave's Old Fashioned Happy Family Meals. Like um, Skipper from Gilligan's Island, I walk around in my outfit from The Nugget or something and yeah. say hello to people. Why is he dressed in high vis? It's his character from The Nugget. Yeah. That's his most famous role. <laughs> How's the food? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> what do you got? I've got sausages, mashed potatoes and peas with gravy. Yeah. Be, yeah. You know what would be on the menu? Chicken schnitzel, the would be yeah. spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. Uh, um, a roast. There'd be a roast of the day. Yeah. We'd have a roast of the and day. And what would you do for dessert? Oh, well, I'm not that... Um, yeah, ice cream and fruit. <laughs> ice cream and fruit. Doesn't get, I'd, yeah, I'd bang a little bit of chocolate topping on there. And oh. I think you've got anything as good I'll as I make a, banana cake. And I, I, what else do I make for dessert sometimes? I make chocolate pudding, a, a chocolate pudding in the oven. You know that one? I Bake love, chocolate pudding. I buy little single ones at the supermarket. It's the happiest time of the day when I have a little bit of uh, chocolate pudding. Anyway. You have to come to my house for dinner once. You have to come over. I'd love to. Kieran said, would Glenn come? We don't have anyone over, really. No, no, do we. Except Betty, my mother-in-law, who... Loves my foot cooking. Well, you do that thing where you're driving around with the kids and then uh, you ring me up and you go, while well, you're in the car with the kids, yeah. uh, can you tell that story about yeah. the time that you... And I... And, <laughs> you're very good. You go, Glenn, tell, us, tell, tell the kids a story about when... The time you got pranked by Agro. Yeah, that's right. And oh, that's I, a great story. And I've got story. to work, work the room, which is his car, <laughs> Yeah, over And the also phone. you've done Uncle Arthur. No fee. No fee. No, no fee. <laughs> no. You did Uncle Arthur once too because they'd been watching Uncle Arthur. Right. And that is, that did is I, a, I do it over the phone for them in the car. Yeah, you've done Uncle Arthur for us. <laughs> um, you know Russell Coit. Oh, you might have done Russell Coit because I love Russell Coit. But they've been watching Uncle Arthur on YouTube and that's a perfect comedy for kids. Yeah, because it's physical. When yeah, Uncle Arthur goes camping was the one they loved. Yeah, yeah. Good memories for you. <laughs> anyway, so I took the bottle. I, I knew that it was cheap. Okay. Yeah. It was ten, it was just $10. Okay. Cheap. I'll, I, Anyway, and I, as I'm walking up, I want to admit to them that I'm drinking cheap wine. And I know that I'm drinking cheap wine, yeah. and it's okay. So as I walk up to the counter, what song did I sing? Cheap wine and a three-day a growth. Three, yeah, exactly. The chisel. Yep. Uh, I went, cheap wine and a three-day growth. Come on. Good song. Come on. And the guy goes, sorry? Oh, <laughs> no. He's probably too young. I said, you know, the song, cheap wine. I've got some cheap wine and I've got a bit of a three-day yeah. growth, so it's uh, exactly spot on. Uh, okay. Oh. Who's it by? Um, Jimmy Patton's and the... Cold Chisel. Cold Chisel. No. Oh, no. was he young? Well, he must have been, I don't know, about 20 or something. So so then not only did I feel embarrassed, so then yeah. I doubled up the embarrassment and um, drove out with, looked around at them and they're kind of shaking their head. Yeah. <laughs> Amused by <laughs> that guy that plays Uncle Arthur and Russell Coy coming up. Imagine someone walking up to you and singing a song that you've never heard before. You've got to go. That's he's a street. He's yeah, a, yeah, there's he, something he, wrong with him. There's something wrong with him. No, he's one of those actor types. Something yeah. weird going on there. So I did a bit of mime and did a bit of a, you know, walking into the wind for them. You yeah. know what you should have done? Just pull up and open the wine and drank it in your car and just <laughs> eyeball him. Yeah. <laughs> And throw the bottle at him. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> well, how are you going there, little kitty? You probably wouldn't remember this either. Oh, 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 he's living in his car. <laughs>
Oh, there's the music. Hello and welcome to Somehow Related and now please welcome your hosts Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. Uh, Woo! Yeah, she, uh, she knows the time to push play, does oh, yeah. Sam. She just uh, does it appropriately and there it is, or Somehow Related. Dave O'Neill, Glenn Robbins here sitting here chatting about two topics that aren't related but are. They are. There is a, there is a connection. The connection is made at the end. So don't keep listening. Yeah. It's a quick podcast. It's not a... I heard someone the other day, they said they'd like to listen to it in bed and it sends them off to sleep. So oh, I, I, I don't know what that means. Does that mean it's the well, tone of the voice? Pilates instructor said her dad's a fan of the show. He's a former media teacher. Oh, for in uh, uh, Newstead. Hello, Mr. Shona's dad. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know your name. <laughs> but your, your daughter's a great Pilates instructor. Are you still doing Pilates? Yeah, I didn't do it yesterday because I had something on, but I, I've been doing it for like at least five years. And How's it? your core? My core's rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because you were, you were a very early... Uh, when early, I first met early you, con- convert. At least 20 years ago, you were doing Pilates, and I'd yeah. never heard of it. yeah. I do it every night on the floor oh, in front of the telly. You've got good posture. I've got a my posture's terrible. Yeah, but um, I, yeah, no, it's. I mean, any activity for me is good. Any any exercise is good. It's my mm, theory. Mm. But um, and so you're doing it once a week on the reformer. Well, you know, yeah, the reformer. But also, my, some of my kids are doing it now, so they go on a Thursday night because they don't do any sport, and I can see them getting bad posture as well. So I'm dragging them to Pilates. So sometimes I do it twice a week. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Look, okay, any exercise yeah. is good. I if reckon. you want to do it at home, though, just do the, just Google. Uh, not, just put it into YouTube. Do the open book. Can you do the open book? You know the open book? No. You know when you lie on the floor and you open your arms like you're opening a large book? Oh, that's good. You know that one? You don't know that one? Because no. they've all got names, haven't they? The oh, yeah. It's the, like, the scooter. Yeah, that's the only one that I can remember. Oh, there's so many of them. Um, the, the, you know, the, with, the, with the spring. Anyway, let's get our yeah. topics. <laughs> <laughs> what are the topics? Vikings and climate change. Two of Vikings. My, two of my favourite things. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you. Uh, did you with, I don't believe in Vikings. <laughs> um, no, I'm on Tony Abbott's page. I don't believe in. You know, my kids keep asking me, does my dad, Kev, who's 83, does he believe in global warming? Because I'm pretty sure he's a sceptic. Who, your dad? Kev, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's not getting... Is it getting warmer? No. I said, Dad, we don't get frost on the cars hardly any, anymore. Remember we used to get frost on the yeah, cars? You yeah. don't get that anymore. No, except my frangipani died. Oh. Is that, that from global warming? Well, that would be frost. Oh, okay. Maybe we do get frost. Yeah, so give us a call if your frangipani yeah. is having some trouble. With the frost? Well, that's what they reckon. But uh, anyway... Um, so uh, the question is: Were you were you are you a believer, non-believer? So no, you're a non-believer. No, I'm a believer. Yeah. Are you 100 percent believer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you can be like a. Well, yeah, you qu- I yeah, question, yeah, yeah, I believe in it. Your voice yeah. goes up a bit. Yeah. No, or you can I, be. Oh no, I believe. I believe it because we're living in like a like a balloon in, a, in a greenhouse. Yeah, in a green. Do you believe it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we're both believers. But then, and there's you know there's some good effects. You live in Tasmania; it's getting warmer. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? What's it going to be like in thirty years? Who knows? But the reality is, the Earth—you can do anything to the Earth—and just goes, yeah, whatever. I'll get through it. I'll be around to five hundred million. Well, you know what? The, the hole in the ozone layer was actually solved. I read this the other day. They, yeah, they had yeah. a hole in the ozone layer. Yeah, and it was Reagan or someone got together. CFCs. Yeah, CFCs. It? Yes, and they and that was her and him and Margaret. We've talked about this on the show. Yeah, Margaret Thatcher. That's right. Well, mm. you, you know, and I've she also changed the world. Changed Literally, the world. Mm. inventing soft serve and oh yes, and that was something we the, learned on this show. We did, which is helping out people at dinner parties when they get they have some fruit and soft serve, then they can say. Invented yeah. by Margaret Thatcher. I don't think anyone's anyway. having soft serve at dinner parties. Well, unless you've got a soft yeah, serve machine. But as your friend, my neighbour had yeah, one, which also we <laughs> learned. But on anything is relevant on topic. Any joke, yes. any bit of information, if it's on topic, is relevant at a dinner party. That's true. Uh, um, but um, global warming. If they reckon if you stop eating meat, the world stops eating meat, global warming will stop. Isn't there been something put through lately? And is it in the UK? They're trying to put a put a price on that. Yeah. To, to, to discourage you from eating red meat? I think they have. Anyway. Meat Free Monday, Paul McCartney says. That was Linda's idea. Meat Free Monday. What do we do straight after this show? We're going to eat meat. 
<laughs> we go and have burgers. <laughs> well, I think I think you. Well, you have fish actually. Jeff. You tend to have a bit of fish. Oh, no, last week I had the, the one that you had. Oh, oh that's pretty good. Oh God, and go and have a little snooze that's after pretty that. Pretty good. And I had burgers last night actually. Anyway, we don't what was your? To, we can have a vegetarian. No, no, meat no. free Monday. Yeah. We're going to meat free Thursday. So, um, anyway. what, what are the elements of global warming? Oh, sea rise. Right. Right. Co- the the, the, oh, it's the been warmer. Warmer sea levels going up. Bad for the Pacific Islands. Um, ice caps melting. Yeah, that's no good. Coral, the coral, the, yeah, great, the reef, the, the Great Barrier that's Reef. Terrible. Too much, uh, too much heat on the reef. Oh, you're not putting a positive spin on it. Well, I'm just trying to think. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to work it. Just, I'm writing on the on the whiteboard. Yeah. And then we can come back to it later yeah. on. So we have got our major points because we're having a. Okay, they're the negatives. What are the positives? <laughs> positives. The positives. Gets warmer in Hobart now. Yep. Uh, you can. Mm, uh, yeah. Someone told me. That in 30 years, Melbourne will be like Brisbane. And we don't want Melbourne to be like Brisbane. No, I, I love Brisbane, but it's too hot in January, yeah, February. Yeah, it's very it, humid. It's a very, you've got to have air con. It's just so yeah. full on. Yeah, and you gather around an air conditioner up there in the summer like you gather around a heater yeah. down here in winter. I said that. I said that first. You said that first. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Glenn Robbins, yeah. global warming believer. So is there much to, to, you know, so if we know what global warming is, then we can. We can go over and we can chat about Vikings, Vikings and see if there's anything in there that may trigger us towards why they're linked. Oh, I, I reckon you would have. I reckon you would know about Vikings, and yeah, I, I reckon you would have watched Vikings. I love Vikings that show with Ragnar. Yeah, with the Aussie. It's an Aussie actor. See, I don't, I've never seen it. Oh, you gotta watch it. Do you like? Uh, what is it? Men wearing lambs, lambs wool, and yeah, and women, and and and. and Guys having a little bit of gel in their hair, I guess just a little bit of a suntan. And, and oh, you would love it. One of the Skarsgård brothers is in it. One of the Skarsgårds. So you know the Skarsgårds? No. Alexander Skarsgård. And uh, there's a whole family of actors. And there's the dad who plays River. Have you seen the ABC show River? Uh-uh. And he's also in Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, anyway, he's a very good actor from uh, Sweden. And then um, he's got all these sons and they're all actors. And they're all getting a gig. Oh, man. One, one was in uh, It as the Clown. One's uh, very good looking, and he's in. Um, he was in that show with Nicole Kidman. He was Nicole Kidman's wife in Pretty Big Lies. Pretty very big. Oh movie. yes, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, very good. Yeah, very good looking. Yeah, I know. And the then one. there's the wacky one who's in Vikings who plays Floki, the boat builder, but he just overacts. So he puts on his mascara and he goes, "I am Floki. I am. I, the gods are talking to me." I'm like, "Mate, you're not in so drama yeah, school." Sounds pretty good to me. So, <laughs> I'd be interested in what you think about his acting. Because he's always talking to the gods. Tommy Ragnar, I had to kill your brother or whatever. Was, is Sam able to bring up a, a scene from With Floki? Yeah, I like. I'd like to hear. You like to hear a bit of Floki. Cause hear I'd be, a little bit of Floki. I'm not. I'm pretty good on. I generally don't mind anyone's acting. I can't generally tell if anyone's good or, you know, I can tell they're really bad. Well, here's the trick. You read this in my acting book. That's uh, uh, that coming I've, out soon. Yeah, it's coming out soon. If you lose yourself in the character. Then, then it's working. If you don't, if you're going, I'm watching George Clooney yeah. pretending, it's not working for you. But sometimes you just go, I forgot that I was watching Robert De Niro. I forgot. Yeah. You just fall well, into it. That's right. That's like, Yeah, and the really good actors can do that. Well, i got to say... He does that whispering kind of gods... That was a, you maybe you should consider oh, do trying, a bit of, um, well it's an Aussie it's, Aussie plays Ragnar the main character who's been killed off spoiler alert but uh, and his wife's very good too Agatha who's a Canadian actress so what did you learn so well done with your, your impression of yeah, what's his name Flocky he sounds like someone who works at a massage pl- he works the front desk yeah he's a travelling student <laughs> Yeah, and he's Flocky. and he's working. Where would he work? A health food shop? No. Yeah, health food shop. Organic fruit shop. Yeah, organic fruit Flocky's shop. Floki's here. Yeah. Floki, yeah. you got any bananas? Look, I forgot the bananas. <laughs> the gods have not spoke to me. Oh, it's something you buy at IKEA. Can I get a Floki? Have you got a Floki? Yeah. It does no. sound like a chair, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're all out of Flokies, mate. Sorry. Yeah, they've been very popular Flokies. <laughs> the yeah. Floki. But he, Travis, Travis Rimmel, Travis, Travis Brimmel, oh, no, Travis. Jeez. So Travis is the Aussie actor. Wow, you've um, you should have a, your own film show. Anyway, so what did you learn? Because I I, I don't know much about. I know Vikings. What Northern Hemisphere, cold, hot water, Sweden, Sweden, Norway, Sweden, Norway yeah, sort of like know. noble warrior, noble savages. Were they? Were they kind of? There was a no. No, no they were just savage. They, I mean, they they were just they they had no respect for. Uh, 
you know, the pagan uh, Christians' religions. So they would just rock up on a beach. They reckon it was the equivalent of like nine eleven happening in, in in England. Right. That the English people and the French people were living this peaceful life, and all of a sudden these boats rock up and these full on big blonde guys get out and women get out with swords and axes and just run up the beach, and they'd always attack the monasteries and the churches because that's where the gold was. And they just go into the church and kill all the priests and the monks and, and take then, them as slaves. But were they ever set up uh, and live there? Or yeah, they just eventually, take, yeah, eventually they, they settled. Up. Yeah, they settled in, Ro- in in France and they settled in England because the, the English were just sick of them and said, I have some land, <laughs> you know, just, and they had settlements. In so York, they existed York, in, in longboats. It was yeah, a long, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they were very good at navigating. But what, So where were they from originally? Sweden, Norway. Denmark. So they just go, hey, guys. You want to get on a boat and we'll um, go out and... Well, they were, they were big... This is what I learned from the Viking show on the SBS. They were big uh, farmers, so they went, but they, they ran... I think this is, might be... The, I don't know if this is a connection, but they ran out of land, basically. And also, in the wintertime, their, their land is no good. It's too hard to farm because it's too cold. And so they had to go out and get new, pillage and plunder yeah, pillage and, and find plunder. new land. Pillage and plunder and find new land. Yeah, so... I, I, yeah... I don't know. So, yeah, it's a fascinating time because then eventually what happened, they settled in France and they settled in England and then the, the, the French Vikings were the ones who took on the British. That was Rollo. Wow, oh, you're good. So they tied the longboats up and sort of said, okay, we're not going to go out anymore and just we'll go out there for a... Well, they, they, they took Paris. That was the thing. They, they, Did they? Yeah, they took Paris. And so then which the, the French were very good soldiers though, but they came back a few times. They kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually the, they took, you know, they, you know, anyway, they, this is all on the Viking show. They took Paris and then the French kind of went, oh. You know, so it was a, it was a, um, have some land. Have some land. So a good history lesson. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. It's a fascinating time. But then eventually it all just sort of settled down and they became part of England. They became part of France and, you know. Because the, the only thing I had was that, you know, when I first went to a fancy dress party, I wore a Viking hat. Because oh, really? you remember you could buy those plastic ones? Oh, with the horns. Yeah. Which was not true. They didn't wear hats with horns. That's that's right. That's from an opera. That's from that famous Viking opera. But they were good if you were driving around your car, you had them on the back seat. You just yeah. pop them on occasionally. <laughs> Pull up the lights next to someone who's been giving you some, you know, road rage, and they but go, I'm not taking on the Viking. Next year I'm going to Denmark, and I'm going to go to the Viking Museum because they've got some of the long – they found some long ships in a fjord, and they pulled them out of the ocean. Oh, and that'd be good. Them together. Oh, how cool would that be? Bit ride, maybe there'd be like a three D ride where you could plunder and pl- pil- pillage and plunder. Pillage and plunder. Um, so we've got your global warming on one side, you've got your Vikings on the other. We know what they're doing. They're wandering around in long boats. They're taking over. They're not good people because they just no. they're chopping the heads off. Look, they were good to their own people, but they used to fight amongst themselves too. There was a lot of fighting amongst themselves. And uh, I think their average age was. You look up the average age is like thirty five. They die at thirty five or forty. The average Viking would die quite early. So they'd have kids quite early. The main cast was good looking, weren't they? They were good. Yeah. And they all had a bit of braided hair going yes, on. Yes, that's right, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was a bit of gel in there. They had gel in those days. Oh, and, yeah, 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 there was gel. There was gel. A bit of wax. There. Yeah, a bit of, bit of eyeliner, bit yeah. of bit of makeup. Um, are you leaning towards anything? Can we can we have some thinking music? <sighs> let's, have some, let's have some Viking music. Why not? Oh, I, I don't know what, what it would be, but I reckon I'm going to say and... foreboding. <laughs> Jeez, you're big on the impressions today. It's good. Ooh. Well, imagine that if you're in your monastery on, on, on the coast of England and you, you hear this. You go, oh, no. What's hey, that, Dal. What's that, Gary? What's that? Excuse me. Yeah. And then they just come kicking There's in the all front door. and People dre- like they're going to a fancy dress party in a boat. <laughs> yeah. They got those horns on? Yeah, well, I think they have. Yeah. Well, no, they haven't. God, when you just run to the mountains, you would just seriously hide, I reckon. Mm, going and chopping off here. Okay. <laughs> Well, that was what I thought it would be. Yeah, very. I felt like running on a boat and you know jumping ashore. That would be the interpretation. That would be the. That would have been, I think, the theme or the theme ish yes. of the, of what the show was like. Yes. Sort of. Um, ah, scary stuff. Yeah. Hmm. You know how long they spent on those boats? It must have been. 
months on those boats. You do wonder. They're good at navigating. They invented navigational me- methods and stuff, the Vikings. They're pretty smart dudes. So did you... Uh, uh, I, I think uh, my, I'm going to uh, have my theory. I think they they started the deforestation of oh, that's Scandinavia, good. if that's the right word. That's good. Because that's why they pillaged and plundered, because of... Um, uh, I do remember, and they show this on the show, that the farming's no good. It gets too hard. Oh, sh- oh God. I was thinking, anyway, that's good. I think that's, I reckon you might be on it. Okay. I should have asked Sam because I was wondering when, when global warming was first recognised. Oh, that's a good question. And I'm wondering whether they were the first, well, you know, as they're wandering around and going, come back next year and they go, oh, that iceberg's a bit smaller. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lars, have you noticed? <laughs> the iceberg's it's smaller. much bigger. Oh, Floki, I talked to the gods. <laughs> I talked to the gods and see what's happening. Ragnar. So I reckon he told me to stab you. The fucking the guy's got a lot to answer for. Yeah, I think they've they've recognised it, and maybe they didn't understand it, but they've gone something's going on here. Maybe. Sam, yeah, when did when was global warming first identified? It was in the 19th century that scientists started to study and understand the effect of chemicals on the Earth's environment, leading to theories about global warming. Yes, uh, uh, Sam, when were the Vikings around? The Viking Age started in the year 793, finishing in 1066. Uh, so that doesn't re- that doesn't no. quite relate, but is that what you're going to say? I'm going to say they recognised something was going on because right. yeah, but we wouldn't have the problems with CO2s then or, or methane, would we? No, no, Maybe I think, I think you might be right. Let's get the answer. Vikings lived in extremely tough agricultural environments that room on the most northern on the earth. If the climate changes by only a couple of degrees, their crops would be ruined. Warmer temperatures also encourage the codfish to migrate further north, making them harder to catch. It's thought that Vikings were encouraged to reign nearby lands because their living situation was so precarious and reliant on a predictable climate. The demise of the Viking Age coincided with the climate change of the medieval warming period. There's more information found in the show notes. So, so we, were both, we were both right, were we? Yeah. In a way? Yeah. Sort of. So maybe we should have our own podcast, uh, podcast, <laughs> historical, <laughs> combining science and, and history. Yeah. Um, and given that your most of your research came through a television show, it's and, true. And, mine, and a few kids' books that I've read to the kids about Vikings. Yeah. Uh, that let's just go to show you. Don't need any more than that. Excellent. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. That's it. Check the show notes for more information. More and more clips from Floki. Oh, we've got a Facebook group as well. Have you ever heard about this? No. Sam set up a somehow related Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook, yeah. we're going to have like a little forum in there. We can get in and discuss the show and stuff. Uh-oh. Well, you don't have to go in there. I'll be in there because I'm on Facebook. So have a look anyway. We'll put it up there in the show notes and join the Facebook group and because we'll chat about the show oh, and stuff. I did notice someone told me that someone has sent one in for us to do. So oh, we can do that in that. a few weeks. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. So, yeah, check the Somehow Related Facebook group if you are on Facebook. Have a look. You have been listening to Somehow Related with Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. I just want to ask you, though. Yeah. Have you got any, anything in your cupboard that you keep just in case you have to go to a fancy dress? Like, oh, like, like I had the Viking hat yeah, yeah. in there for years, and I finally let it go. And I'm not wearing that anymore to a fancy dress because it's just you can't wear it. And you, mind you, and you can still buy them at two dollars shop. The Viking. In, in I had a really good track. I had a really good track suit for a while and a moustache, so I could do a good chopper. Oh, ah, yeah. So it was an all encompassing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had the, I had yeah. the chopper moustache, yeah. which I kept, yeah. and then the, the dodgy track suit. And I had a great sports bag. You know, they were these sort of armed robberies, yeah, and they yeah. carry the shotgun in an old. <laughs> Oh, good like look. a blue sort of sports bag. Good look, yeah. From the seventies, yeah. Oh, I love that bag. I hope I still got it. Yeah. Because occasionally I bring it on a plane, but the zip broke. Well, but also we've got a dress up box for the kids, and so that's my partner's one of her favourite things is dressing up the kids. They've dressed up as Vikings for um. You've got to go as your what culture you're from. It's good fun, isn't it? Oh, the kids love it, and they've they have book day, so they dress up as. So um, one of the kids went as. My daughter went as Captain uh, uh, from Tintin, the, the the drunk Captain from Tintin, and uh, so Captain Haddock. You've got it. I mean, I've cleaned out my cupboard so many times. I think I've thrown away some really good stuff. But it is. It's also handy to just go down to the, the Brotherhood and yeah. just go through. You usually find something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's good. It's worth keeping. Yeah, I think it's worth keeping a Hawaiian shirt because invariably, I bought one the other day. 
I had from? to do a gig in Queensland, tropical Queensland, and, they, and the theme was tropical. Yeah. And so I went down to my local menswear shop in Fairfield, Frank Rocker's menswear, yeah. established in 1965. He's been there since the day I was born. I was born in 65. He's been working there since 1965, this guy. And it's that old-fashioned menswear shop. Fantastic. Yeah, he's got everything you need. And I said, Frank, I'm going, to, I'm going to a corporate gig in Queensland, but I need a tropical shirt. He goes, yeah, no problems. And I got this great – it's like one of those ones you see the Prime Minister's wearing on the Apex Summit. Yeah, perfect. You know, so it's not, a, it's not a Hawaiian shirt. It's mm. more a, like mm. a flowers, and, but it looks yeah, tropical. Yeah, it covers a lot of – Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if, if you put it on, you just look like, hey, I don't take myself too seriously. Yeah. I'm up for a good time. Um, come over, have a chat, and I'll tell you where I got my shirt from. And I've never worn it again. I saw it the other Don't day. throw it away. No. Yeah. Hello, cans. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> 